Hey, welcome to Chill Plays. If you bought a capture card like the HD60 from Elgato, or the HD60S Plus, or the 4K Pro, or the HD60 Pro, yada yada, you got this hooked up to your PC, but now you want to stream. I'm going to walk you through it, hooking up your capture card to OBS, also known as Open Broadcaster Software. So right after the intro, we're going to jump back on the computer, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Before we get on the computer, if you do not have your Elgato set up with your PC, please follow this tutorial. I'm going to put the card up here. Follow the tutorial to get this thing set up on your PC. You will need the drivers installed for this, which come as a bundle part of the 4K Capture Utility or the Elgato Game Capture HD software. I'll walk you through all that in that other video. So get that set up, come back here, and let's go. All right, now that we're on the computer, we're going to open up a web browser and we're going to download OBS, which is Open Broadcaster Software. You're going to go to obsproject.com. You'll see OBS Studio, which is the one that we want. I'm on Windows. Uh, you'll see that it supports Windows 8, 8.1, and Windows 10. There's a Mac version and a Linux version, but we're going to download Windows. Once that is downloaded, we will install this. Click yes. Once that is completed installing, we're going to launch OBS Studio. This is version 25.0.4. Your version may differ. If you're doing this at the time I'm recording this, then you will have this version as well. All right, when you first start it, if you've never started OBS before, you will see the auto configuration wizard pop up. This is a really good place to start. If you're going to stream to Twitch, which is what we're setting this up for, we're going to click yes. And then we're going to optimize for streaming. Uh, not going to be recording on this tutorial optimized for streaming recording is secondary click next the base canvas resolution is the resolution that you are capturing in this case i am capturing uh, 1080p so i'm going to use the current resolution it's also the resolution of my monitor uh, so if i want to do a desktop capture the resolution matches we don't have any problems frames per second i'm going to go ahead and use 60. now if you don't want to use 60 there is also 30 and there's also 60 or 30 uh, that, that'll depend on your machine. I have a pretty nice machine, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose 60 frames per second. Again, the base canvas resolution is what you're capturing. That doesn't mean that's what you're gonna be streaming to. So I can use a base resolution of 1920 by 1080 and then stream in a different resolution. Uh, I'd like to stream in 900p. Uh, it's a step up from 720, but you may have to downscale to 720. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. So I wanna click next. Enter your stream information. We're going to be streaming to Twitch. You can also set this up for YouTube, Mixer, Facebook. I'm going to choose Twitch and then I'm going to connect my account. Now there are two ways to do this. You can do it with a stream key, which requires you to log into Twitch, go to your account settings, grab your stream key and paste it in, or you can connect your Twitch account directly. So we're going to connect the account. It's going to ask us to log into Twitch. So I'm going to log in with my test account because I don't want to go live on my real account All right that's going to authenticate streaming to twitch prefer hardware encoding versus cpu encoding this is going to depend on your cpu and the graphics card that you have i have a, a 2080 ti in here so i'm going to prefer the hardware encoding if you do not have a great graphics card you can offload the encoding onto your cpu you're going to need a very nice cpu to do that one with multiple cores and multiple threads. You can change this later. This is just what OBS is trying to determine the best settings for you. So I'm gonna prefer hardware encoding. I'm gonna estimate the bit rate with the bandwidth test. And then I'm gonna click next. So you'll see this fuzzy screen come up as it's doing a bandwidth test and it's gonna test how much bandwidth I have. That's my upload speed to the Twitch server. So this is gonna take a second. It's gonna choose the closest Twitch server to me it's going to try to determine the best bit rate for me to stream at bit rate is going to determine the resolution that you can stream at successfully okay so once that's done it's going to come back with my results so i'm streaming to twitch uh, the server is set to automatic it's going to find the closest server with the least amount of traffic the video bit rate for me it is estimated at 6000 now that is determining my upload speed i have fiber internet so mine is pretty high just a quick interjection on bit rate here a bit rate is set in kilobits per second. When you look at your upload rate from your internet service provider, 
that's usually going to be in a megabits per second. So when I'm setting mine to 4,500 kilobits per second, that's actually going to be 4.5 megabits per second upload, not download. Your internet service provider will give you a download speed and an upload speed. Your bitrate cannot exceed your upload speed from your ISP. So if your ISP gives you a five megabit per second upload, which is more common than you would think, you cannot set your bitrate above 5,000. Just because you're streaming doesn't mean other things aren't sending data back and forth, hogging up some of that bandwidth. So you wanna make sure that your bitrate is below your maximum upload speed or you're gonna have a lot of problems. All right, now back. The 6,000 bitrate is going to allow me to stream 1080p 60 frames a second. Now the problem with a high bitrate setting it that high is people on the other end of Twitch that are watching your stream have to have a very good download speed. So I usually lower my bitrate once I get in here into the settings. I lower my bitrate so I'm not punishing people trying to watch my stream on a mobile device or something like that that doesn't have a lot of download speed. It'll cause them to buffer and can lag your stream out and make it look kind of nasty. So my stream and recording encoders are both set to hardware. NVENC is the NVIDIA uh, hardware encoder that is built into the 10 series and 20 series graphics cards. So a, 20, a 1070 up to a 2080, uh, you should be able to use this NVENC encoder. It's gonna set my recording quality for me, high quality, medium file size, that's fine, I'm not recording. Uh, base canvas is gonna be 1920 by 1080. This is the output resolution that I'm outputting to Twitch. Now this is set to 1080 from this configuration wizard, but again, I'm going to lower that bit rate. So then therefore I'm going to lower my scaled resolution as well. Frames per second is 60. I'm going to apply these settings. Once you apply those settings, if you're set up to stream to Twitch, you're going to get these little panels that pop up. One is the stream information and the chat. I like to dock these on either side. You just grab the top of them. So inside your OBS, you have a preview window in the middle. You have your stream information on the left and your stream chat on the right. Again, you can grab these and move these all around any way you want to. So I don't have to have a separate window open to look at my chat. It's part of my OBS preview. Over on the stream information, I can change the title of my stream. So I'm gonna type in stream testing title today and spell it right. Uh, there's a go live notification. These, if your Twitter account is synced or your Facebook account is synced to your Twitch account, it'll automatically send out this tweet or this Facebook post and you can put whichever, whichever you want to in there. Categories, you can do whatever you want. I'm just chatting since I'm testing. Tags I usually don't worry about and I can update information. That's going to send all that information to Twitch, update all the stuff for my live stream. Okay, along the bottom we have scenes sources, the audio mixer, scene transitions, and controls. Now starting with scenes, a scene is what you see on the stream. So a scene is a collection of sources. Sources are individual items such as a picture, a video capture device, a display capture, a movie, anything like that. You put those together into a scene and you can organize and and change those around as you want to. Uh, the audio mixer, of course, is gonna show you the audio levels. Uh, the microphone that I'm recording on is also being sent to this PC. So whenever I talk, you'll see the levels going up and down. Desktop audio is the audio on the PC that you're streaming from. So if I go down here and do a sound test, you'll see that that blip also showed up on the audio mixer. So if I wanted to play music on this computer in the background, I have a separate level for that that I can lower and get a comfortable mix with my microphone and my audio that is being sent to the stream. Scene transitions. So whenever you switch from scene to scene, the transition is what's gonna happen. So fade, cut, or you can do what's called a stinger transition, which is a custom transition. It's a movie that you can make. Plan on doing a video on that in the future, but for right now I'm gonna leave that as fade and 300 milliseconds is 0.3 seconds, so that's pretty quick. The controls you have on the right, start streaming, start recording, Studio mode is a more advanced. Uh, if you click that, you'll see you have a preview and a program. The program is what's actually being sent to the stream. The preview allows you to see what's going to be sent whenever you click transition. If you have a lot of cameras and you wanna queue something up before you send it to the stream, it's not real time, you can preview it. Hit the transition, it'll go on to the program and the live stream. 
I don't use studio mode because I'm not very fancy. So I just turn that off. Uh, here you also see settings and exit. So we're gonna click settings real fast. There are a couple of themes you can go through, different languages. Uh, I enjoy the dark theme. I'm gonna automatically check for updates on startup. Leave all this stuff the same. If you wanna get into this, you can. They're pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you can set it to auto record when you're streaming. I usually let Twitch keep my streams recorded for me so I don't record as I'm streaming. As you can imagine, recording and streaming at the same time does put a lot of strain on your PC, so I keep that off. If I go to my stream, this is what we set up before. My account is already connected to Twitch. Server is set to automatic. If there's any add-ons you have, such as uh, better TTV, uh, anything that you use for custom emotes, things like that, you can allow those. So the chat window will recognize those and you can use those in the chat on OBS as well. Output, a lot of people keep this on simple. I like to go to advanced because then I have separate tabs and I can set things the way I want to. For a streaming tab, you can only choose one audio track. OBS allows up to six audio tracks. That doesn't mean only six audio devices. Those are just separate tracks. You can double up devices onto tracks Leave those out of the stream if you want to, if you don't send them to that track. It's a little complicated. If you put everything on audio track one, all that's gonna to go to the stream. The encoder, I'm gonna leave that as the NVIDIA NVENC. That's going to send my encoding to the GPU. So my NVIDIA uh, GPU is gonna be handling the encoding. If you put that on X264, that encoding is taking place on your CPU. So just keep that in mind. If you don't have a great GPU, you might wanna use X264. The new NVNC is a great encoder and I have a great graphics card, so I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna leave rescale output off. We're gonna rescale somewhere else. If you rescale here, you're actually going to rescale on the encoder itself and can add extra overhead. Again, we're trying to eliminate as much overhead as possible so that we our stream looks pretty good. Rate control. CBR is constant bit rate. That means that Whatever bit rate you set here, it's gonna to try to keep that bit rate constant throughout the entire stream. I recommend that highly. There is VBR, which is a variable bit rate. So you give it a minimum and a max, and it'll vary between those depending on what's going on in the scene. If there's a lot of movement, it'll up the bit rate. If there's not a whole lot of movement, it can keep the bit rate down. If you don't have great internet, VBR may be a great opportunity for you to get into streaming. I'm gonna use CBR. We were recommended at 6,000 kilobits per second. I'm not gonna use 6,000, because again, that's a lot. I'm gonna leave this at 4,500. It's still pretty high. It's a lot higher than necessary for 720p. You can probably get around 2,500 kilobits per second if you wanna do 720. It may look a little grainy, but these are, these are the settings you wanna play with to make sure that your stream looks the best that it can. So I'm gonna bump mine down to 4,500. Keyframe interval, I'm gonna set that to two per Twitch recommendation. I'm gonna keep my quality and high presets and profile. So look ahead is something for the NVENC. I usually leave that turned off. Psycho visual tuning is also a setting for the NVENC encoder. It helps to determine when there's fast stuff going on on the screen. If, if you're playing a high motion video game, uh, visual tuning can help smooth that stuff out. As you're streaming a uh, GPU if you have more than one GPU this is where you change this I only have one so I'm gonna leave that as zero so that's the only GPU I have max B frames I'm gonna leave that as two if you're having trouble you can up this to four twitch and everyone recommends back max B frames at two I'm gonna click apply recording I'm not worrying about this because we're not recording audio replay buffer we're gonna leave all that the same so we should everything set up 4,500 kbps. That should be great. We're sending audio track one to the stream using the ENV, NVENC encoder, high quality, max B frames of two. On to our audio. You can leave the sample rate in your audio at 44.1 or you can choose 48. That depends on your devices. Most things are pretty good at 44 uh, kilohertz. So you can leave that there uh, in stereo. That's fine as well. You can change that to mono if you want. Desktop audio. There are two desktop audio devices that you can output to OBS. My default here is my optical output since that's going to my headphones. Any sound that is going to my headphones is also going to the stream. That is my default. If I wanted to split my audio to different things, 
you can do that here. Same with the mic and auxiliary. My uh, microphone is coming in on the line in. So I'm using a Go XLR to record my microphone. It is coming into the line in on the computer. So I'm gonna leave that as the default since I know that it's working. Here, you're gonna wanna, wanna choose whatever microphone that you have. If you're using the mic on your webcam, you can choose that here. If you have a headset mic, you can use that here. And again, you get up to four different devices. So I can also record uh, the microphone from my webcam as well as the mic that I'm speaking on now. I leave those disabled because I only have one microphone. It's just me. If you had two microphones and two people, this is where you would set that stuff up. Uh, the meters, decay rate is fast and peak meter type is sample. That's just settings for your audio meter that you see down here, how fast it goes down when you're done talking, things like that. If you want to enable push to talk or push to mute, you can do that here in the bottom. Assign those to hotkeys and the mic will only work whenever you push to talk or you can push to mute if you need to cough. <laughs> you can set that to a hotkey, hold that down, cough, and then move on. So that's our audio. Now we're going to the video. So this is where the resolution comes into play. So my base canvas resolution is 1080p. The aspect ratio is 16 by nine. This is important to keep in mind because you wanna keep your aspect ratios the same from your base and your output. The output scaled resolution. So in this instance, we are capturing 1080p video but I don't want to send 1080p to Twitch. So output scale resolution is what is being sent to Twitch. I don't want to send 1080p since I took my bitrate down, but I want to keep a 16 by nine aspect ratio. Now I could do 1280 by 720, and that's going to be one that you can select here. 1280 by 720, 965, 40. If you need to drop your resolution, this is where you, where you would do it. This also depends on your bitrate. So keep that in mind. Lower bitrate, lower resolution. I like to stream in 16 by nine which is 1600 by 900. So I'm going to type in 1600 by 900. That's gonna keep a 16 by nine aspect ratio, downscale a little bit, but still keep it pretty crisp and sharp. The downscale filter, this is the algorithm that OBS is going to use to downscale that 1080p to 900p. Bicubic is usually great for most people. If you want it to look a little better, you can choose the Lanscos. Uh, this is what I use, but again, I have a great CPU and a great graphics card. So I'm gonna use 36 samples. If you wanna use 16, you can, or bilinear if you need to. Again, play with these, do some test streams, figure out what works for you with your upload speed and your download speed and your CPU and GPU. Frames per second, I'm gonna keep that at 60 because I'm playing in 60 frames per second. So I wanna keep that at 60. Hotkeys. Fortunately, I have an Elgato Stream Deck, which acts as a separate little hotkey keyboard. I don't have to set hotkeys in here. But if you don't have a stream deck, you can set hotkeys for start recording, stop recording, pretty much anything, pretty much anything in OBS that you can do, there's a hotkey for. So switching scenes, going to the next scene, things like that. You can mute your audio, mute your microphone. So if you wanna get fancy, put in hotkeys. Again, I'm using a stream deck, so I'm not gonna use that. Advanced, I would put this above normal or even high. That's gonna set the priority of where your CPU is queuing up instructions to complete OBS processes. I keep mine above normal. Again, I have a good CPU. If you don't, you might wanna keep that at normal. Or if you're having issues, you might wanna jack it up to high and just see if it resolves your issues. I leave all of this the same, NV12 and 601. If you know your color space, NV12 is fairly safe. 601, 709. Uh, again, if you're really into color, then you can play with these. I leave mine at 601 and NV12. Here are recording settings. You can set up uh, file names, how it names your uh, files when they're done recording. You can set OBS to have a its own stream delay. Twitch already has a stream delay built in. If you want to delay that even more, you can delay that. You can put in a duration of seconds of how long it's going to delay the stream before it actually sends it. Keep in mind that if you're trying to real-time chat with people in your chat, this is going to be delayed and it's going to be even more delayed than the delay that Twitch already puts on it, if that makes sense. Uh, the next section is automatically reconnect. Uh, if you have network issues, it's gonna retry 20 times every 10 seconds. If you have a, a blip in your network, this can retry and reconnect for you. The rest of this, I leave the same. I'm gonna hit apply and okay. And now we're taken back to our preview window. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so we can see this. All right, now the fun part is we're going to add our capture device. OBS by default throws a default scene in here with no sources. I'm going to right click on this and rename this to gameplay. So this is my gameplay scene, which means it's gonna have all the stuff for my gaming on it. 
So I need to add a source to my scene in order for it to show up here. Now I'm using an Elgato HD 60 S plus. So I'm going to choose a video capture device. If you're using any external capture card or a webcam, those are going to be video capture devices. So video capture device, I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to call this the Elgato HD 60 S. Click okay. And you'll see that I have the output from my Elgato here. So this is where I set all the properties for my Elgato. The device here, if I have multiple devices, they will show up here. So you see there's the Elgato screen link if I'm capturing my phone screen, my webcam, or my HD 60 S Plus. This is what we want. There are some issues sometimes whenever you load up OBS, if you already have this stuff set up and your Elgato is blank, you can choose deactivate and then reactivate your device from within OBS. So that's pretty nice. It kind of gives it a little jump start. Configure video we'll get to, configure crossbar we don't use. So deactivate when not showing. Uh, if you don't have a whole lot of memory on your machine, you can check this box. So if you go to a scene that's not using the Elgato, it will turn that off and it won't be eating up memory. I leave that unchecked because whenever you go back to the scene, sometimes it can try to kick itself back on. You might have issues with that. Resolution, leave that as the device default. Now, if you have a capture card that's capturing 4K and you want to change that to 1080, you can do that here. Color space and color range I'm leaving as default as well. Again, if you're into color spaces and color ranges, you can play with these. Uh, these will match what we said in our settings earlier. Uh, buffering, we can disable that. And capture audio only, we'll leave that on. So we make sure we're getting the audio from our Elgato device. Now let's go back to configure video. If you click this, you get the video proc amp. Just like in the Elgato software, you can change brightness, contrast, hue, and saturation. So if your colors look a little washed out, you can add some contrast and saturation. If it looks dark, you can add some brightness. I tend to find that the defaults are okay on this. So I'm going to click okay. I'm going to click okay again. And now you see that I have an Elgato HD 60 S source inside of my gameplay scene. You also see that down here in my audio mixer, I have my microphone, which I had, and it added the Elgato HD 60 S sound. So this is the sound coming from my PlayStation 4 at this time. Now I can lower this level if I want to. I can raise it up and this is a good way to mix your microphone to make sure that you're not underneath the game sound and people can hear you over the game. One rule of thumb that I've seen is to keep your microphone barely in the yellow and to keep your game in the green. Now again, do some test streams, make sure that your audio mix is correct. You can also mute these. So you can mute your sound. You can also go to this advanced audio properties. So if you click on this little cog here, go to advanced audio properties. This will show you all the audio devices that I have. You can set the volume here if you need to. That's the same as using this slider. So if you see if I, if I move this slider, then it's moving the volume on this uh, advanced audio properties. If I want to down mix anything to mono, I can click this box and it'll automatically down mix that to mono. Balance, sync offset. If you're using a webcam and a microphone and they're not in sync, then you can add delay to whatever you need to. You can also add a delay to the webcam video if you need to, uh, to get those in sync. Audio monitoring allows you to hear the output of these devices. So I can turn on only monitor my microphone if I want to hear myself in my headphones but I don't want that to go to stream. Monitor only mute output. If I want to monitor and hear it, I can monitor and output. Beware that your output device may be your desktop device. So if you're trying to monitor your voice and output to stream, you may get a loop. And the fact that you're gonna double up the mic audio and the desktop audio is also gonna have your mic in it as well because you're monitoring it. So I just leave the monitoring off these are the tracks that I was talking about before. So the six audio tracks. If you remember when we set up our settings for streaming, we said that we're going to send track one. So anything you want to go out to stream, you want to make sure that it's checked on track one. So we're going to close that. Now in our preview window, this preview window is 16 by nine resolution. It is 1080. I mean, it's not full screen, but it is 1080. Uh, you see these uh, handles here. So I can resize this output. So if I wanted to put graphics back here, I could. If I wanted to put this into a little box, I can move it around. If you right click on these and you look at transform, there are things you can turn it upside down. You can mirror it horizontally. You can fit, stretch, center, vertically, horizontally, all that stuff. So I'm going to fit to screen to make sure that it is the full 1080p video that I'm capturing. Now, 
let's add a new scene. So I'm going to call this gameplay with cam. So again, you see that this gameplay with cam scene has no sources at all. So my gameplay has the Elgato in it. Gameplay with cam has no sources. So I'm going to add a video capture device because I want gameplay. I've already created the Elgato HD 60 S source. So I can add that as an existing source. Both the gameplay and gameplay with the cam both have the Elgato HD 60 S as a source in it. However, with gameplay with cam, I want to add a webcam. So video capture device. I'm going to call this the Logitech C920 because that's the camera that I'm using. Uh, make sure that you're naming your sources so that you know what they are. I'm going to click OK. I'm not using the HD 60S. I'm using the webcam C920 and it's right here. So this is a little different. You have to play with your webcam because all, web all webcams are different. The resolution, I want to make sure that this is uh, 1920 by 1080. Uh, you saw before it was kind of cut off into a square configuration. So I just want to do custom 1920 by 1080 and then the highest FPS that I can get out of this camera. All this stuff is the same as adding the Elgato. So I'm going to click OK. And then my webcam is huge because I chose 1920 by 1080, but I don't want it to take up the whole screen. So I'm going to grab these resize handles and move it down. Let's say I just want to sit down here in the bottom. And that's how you add a webcam on top of your scene. So these sources are layered. I can check this eye box to hide it or bring it back. I can also lock it so that I can't move it. So I do recommend that once you get your sources set up within your scene to go ahead and lock them because these handles can easily, you can easily wreak havoc on things with these handles and not realize it. So I'm going to go ahead and lock these. There you go. Webcam and a gameplay. This is the most basic you can get for a stream with a webcam. Again, you don't have to have a webcam, but most people prefer to see someone's face, but this is how you get that done. Uh, you also notice that it also adds the audio source for the webcam down here, but I'm not capturing audio. I'm not using the microphone from my C920. Uh, if I were, I would have levels here. I can click on this uh, cog wheel here and do hide if I don't want to see that. So now we are ready to stream. All right, so before we go live, I'm actually going to turn off my desktop audio because it's <laughs> my. if I'm watching the stream on the PC that I'm recording on, then it's going to also pick up the audio from the stream, which is me talking with a little bit of delay. So I'm going to mute that. Normally you might not want to do that unless you're watching the stream on the PC that you're recording on. So once we're ready, we're going to hit start streaming. Down in the bottom here, you're going to see how many frames have been dropped. Uh, luckily, there are no dropped frames right now. How long I've been live. How long my recording is, if I am recording. And then also uh, how much CPU that we're using. So I'm using 4.6% CPU and 60 frames a second. And then my bit right here. So it's keeping right around that 4,500 that I set up there. It's actually going a little above that, but that's fine. If you want to, you can go up to view docs and stats and that's going to give you a nice little stat window that you can dock somewhere uh, i like to have this just so that, that i can see um it kind of takes the stuff in the bottom and adds a little bit more uh, it can also tell you which frames are being dropped and why they're being dropped whether it's uh in this instance there was one frame dropped to rendering lag or encoding lag and that can help you pinpoint kind of where some of your problems are it also tells you how much disk space you have left if you're recording and also how much memory that you're using. That's good, but now that we're streaming, let's go check out our stream. Right there, we're gonna be a little behind, but we are streaming live to Twitch, and everything looks good. So if I wanna switch scenes, if I set a hotkey for that, I can push the hotkey on my keyboard, or I can just click the scene, and you see that my transition is set to fade so that webcam fades away and now it's gone off of the stream as well. I can bring it back and it'll show up on the stream I Can take it away or I can hide it. And all this stuff is uh, fairly simple and straightforward. So you can either uh, mute your live stream and minimize that if you wanna keep a viewer in there or you can see your chat up here on your OBS preview and interact with your viewers. Uh, one thing I don't really recommend playing games on the preview window 
Uh, sometimes this can have some lag in it. Uh, it may not feel, it may feel a little floaty and not correct. So I do recommend having a separate monitor or TV. Uh, when you're ready to stop, you can hit stop streaming. And then notice that the, all the counters at the bottom are gone. You can go back to your stream and it is over. That's a really quick and simple way to get a stream up and running using an external capture card. Again, bitrate, resolution are very important. They depend heavily on your CPU and your GPU. So make sure that you run some test streams. If you notice you're dropping a lot of frames, maybe change the bitrate, maybe change the resolution. My resolution is set to 900p. Maybe you get into 720 and that resolves your issues. So once you're done with OBS, you can exit and then you can close your browser window. So that's it. It's really simple to get a stream up and running using OBS and a capture card if you want to capture your consoles. So the only things that I really used in this was a, a PC to run the OBS software. I used the Elgato HD60S and a cheap little webcam, the Logitech C920. Uh, both of these things are fairly affordable. You're going to at least need a capture card if you want to capture your console to your PC and you want to stream from your PC. So this is a must have for recording your consoles. Webcam is not necessary, but a lot of people like to see a webcam on a stream. They like to see who they're chatting with. And that's pretty much it. Uh, if there's something I left out and you wanna see, let me know, cause I'm always up for making videos on things like that. Uh, the Elgato HD60S and the Logitech C920, uh, I will put links down in the, in the description. They are affiliate links, they do help out the channel. If you like the content, please, please subscribe. I've gotten a lot of subscriptions and a ton of views and I can't be more thankful for you guys. I really do appreciate it. It makes me excited to make these videos and share what little knowledge I have with you guys. Uh, if anything, you learn what not to do or the worst way to do it. Hope you guys have a great day. Love you all. Peace.